Today we're going to talk about how to get smooth handheld video. So let's do this. What's up YouTube? I just want to start by saying it is a nasty, nasty day out here in North Carolina. Just so like rainy and wet and I could do without it. Yeah. Before I get started, I did want to remind you, as I have for the last couple weeks, you still have some time for the small rig multi-tool giveaway. I'm not going to give all the details again because it seems long. Just go watch the video that I put up in the corner here and they'll give you all the details to win a small rig multi-tool. I think I've got this down. By the time I officially get it all down, the contest will be over. So we're just gonna go ahead and get into it and not do a whole bunch of housekeeping today. So I wanna share with you today my tips on getting smoother and more stable handheld footage. So without further ado, let's get into these tips on smoother handheld video. So my first tip in getting smoother handheld video is if you can shoot a wider shot, take your focal length and make it more of a wider focal length. The reason I mentioned to have a wider shot is it gets rid of the obvious micro jitter that may happen when you are shooting handheld. I'll show you on the Tamron at its longest focal length as I go handheld those micro jitters are a little bit more obvious. Let me pull back to the 28 millimeter side of the Tamron so that you can see that as the shot gets wider those micro jitters become a little bit less obvious. And so that's something I encourage you to do if you're doing more handheld videography or filmmaking is if the shot permits it, if the scene permits it to go a little bit more of a wider shot to get rid of those micro jitters that may occur when you are doing more handheld footage. So tip number two is going to be foot placement and movement. So first off with foot placement, having something that's a little bit more of a sturdy stance in your foot placement is going to be a little bit more helpful when you're doing handheld footage. Maybe do a little bit more of a wider stance to get a little bit better of a base so that any movement back and forth or anything like that will be a little bit less dominant than if you were to have a close together stance which may introduce like swaying or any type of unnecessary movement you may not want so having a sturdy foundation in your stance is going to be one thing that will help your handheld footage so you have foot placement but then you also have movement now if you're doing more of a locked off handheld shot having that foot placement is really crucial but on top of that if you're doing a movement shot then be conscious of how you're moving we all have heard it by this point you have the ninja walk kind of the uh, like heel over toe movement i remember when i first started doing videography i used to think what is a ninja walk and it kind of just happened after a while and i'll tell you right now the thing that clicked with me the most to help my ninja walk was actually doing it and in certain scenarios where i had to do it fast so practice with that and to give away my pro tip is to chase your toddler and try to get smooth footage. That will help you out tremendously with your ninja walk. If you don't have a toddler, maybe find a friend that has a toddler and offer to babysit. So the take home for that would be is to practice the ninja walk. It sounds really weird. You're going to look really weird at first, but after you start doing it more and more and more, it becomes second nature. So you have your foot placement, your ninja walk for movement. So tip number Three. Tip number three is going to introduce accessories. So I'm going to run through a few things that I would recommend to help have stable, smoother handheld footage. And we're going to start with a top handle. Now this is one I don't need a rig for. It actually goes into my hot shoe and I can hold my camera without a rig at the top. Why does the top handle help? It works because you're letting gravity do a lot of the heavy lifting. So what you're doing is you're basically holding on to the camera. You're letting gravity do its thing and all you're doing is Kind of guiding the camera along you're moving it around composing the shot how you want but a lot of the heavy lifting is done by gravity so a top handle is really helpful in creating more stable or smoother footage again because you're letting gravity do all the work and you're just kind of like gently guiding it along like a toddler when they're going crazy gently guiding them to dinner or to the bathroom i should probably get out more instead of talking about toddler life in my videos. The next item I would recommend is a side handle. That's what this is. I actually got this for free when I bought my EOS M and decided to keep it when I sold my EOS M, which there is a, uh, a plot twist. I may be getting that camera back. Oh dear God, I'm actually excited about it. Hopefully I should have it back soon and so you may actually see some videos on it complete side note, complete derail of this topic, but you may be seeing some EOS M videos here soon. So 
subscribe. So going back to the topic at hand, uh, side handle. The reason why side handles work is think about what we talked about with foot placement. A lot of times when you have a wider stance, the more stable your body is going to be when you're standing. Same thing applies with these side grips. The wider the grip is going to be, the more just like real estate you're holding on to. Having that wider grip will help your shot be a little bit more stable. So introduce side handles. I have one, maybe introduce two to have just a little bit more of a wide shot. If you look at any professional camera operator, a lot of times they're doing shoulder Shoulder rigs and a part of that shoulder rig is wider grips. Again, with those wider grips, it helps eliminate some of those micro jitters. And so having side handles will be helpful as well. In general, one thing that will help out your handheld footage is to potentially rig up your camera. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this, but I know a lot of people that will rig up a camera, have a battery pack, have like side grips, have a top handle, everything, the whole nine yards, they'll just massive rig. But the reason why I recommend to rig up your camera is because it creates more weight. The lighter your camera is, the more those micro jitters are going to occur. And on top of that, the lighter your camera is, the more you're going to move unnecessarily. Whereas if it's a heavier rig, it's a little bit harder to move things around, which is actually what you want when you're doing handheld footage. You want more conscious movement, not something that happens on accident or just being a byproduct of like micro jitters or things like that. And so rigging up your camera, maybe introduce a cage, top handle, side handle, battery pack. It's actually gonna help your handheld shots be a little bit more stable, be a little bit smoother. The last product I wanna talk about is a camera strap. We've all seen it. We've all seen the camera strap trick on how to get smoother footage by using a camera strap, but if you have not, I wanna mention what you're gonna do with your camera strap. So what you're gonna do with your camera strap is you're gonna obviously attach it to your camera, but once you have your camera attached, you're going to tighten the camera strap enough to where as you're holding your camera, you're creating tension on the back of your neck with the camera strap. One, that tension will help get rid of some of those micro jitters, but also you're introducing a third point of contact which is a great segue into my last tip for better handheld footage, and that is multiple points of contact. Scary good transition. But having multiple points of contact on your camera, I don't know why I still have this on, uh, will help your footage be smoother. And this is actually, I saved this for last because this is actually my favorite option. Multiple points of contact can actually mean a few different things. You can start by having two points of contact, either have your hand on the side of the camera and the bottom of the camera, or if you're using side handles on your camera, having a hand on each side of your camera, or potentially if you're using a top handle, having one at the top of the camera, one at the bottom of the camera. But those would be examples of having two points of contact. Now, my preference is side, bottom, in against my face with the EVF or the viewfinder, but that's introducing three points of contact. But going back to the camera strap, that's why that works, because you already have two points of contact on the camera, and this introduces a third as well as having that tension. And so multiple points of contact on the camera is one of the biggest things that will help your footage be more stable and smoother, whether it's two points of contact or three points of contact onto the camera. Definitely helps your footage be more stable just a little bit more smooth. Smooth criminal. So those are some of the things that I do or I use to help my handheld footage be a little bit more stable, a little bit smoother. Now with all those tips being said, one of the things I would also recommend is to just be smart about how you edit the footage. Mask your imperfections on your footage with how you edit it. Editing is a magical tool in and of itself. One way to hide those micro jitters or those unnecessary movements is to just simply edit them out of the footage. Now, just because I know it may come up, one thing you may have already noticed is I didn't mention anything about frame rates. I think with these techniques, you can shoot at any frame rate and get smooth, stable footage. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second. These tips will help all those frame rates be a little bit smoother. You don't need to boost up your frame rates to get smooth footage. It helps, but you don't need it. So those are my tips on getting smoother, more stable handheld footage. I hope this has been helpful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. If you're digging the content coming from the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget about the Small Rig Multi-Tool Giveaway. Check out the Seven Artisans 25 millimeter review that I did uh, to potentially win the Small Rig Multi-Tool. Go and find your journey, go embrace life, go shoot more stable handheld footage and make everyone jealous. I'll see you here next time. <gasps> Peace. Shh. But having multiple points, I 
feel like I'm like a burp is coming this entire time. Remember to remember to check out the 24. Remember remember to remember to check out the 20. Oh, let me know if you guys like the 6300 hanging out back there. I see a lot of people put cameras in the background of their video, and I was like, I got an extra camera. Why not? And I put the Helios 442 on there. It's not like super impressive, but it's a camera.